Hey up Chuck, good evening, welcome to Teachers Talk Radio. It's the Late Late Show, my name is Jeff Pedley and tonight it's all about accents in the classroom. Having an accent when teaching, a blessing or a curse. Accent is identity, accent is pride. Accent can also be an obstacle to communication, creating barriers. Have you ever been asked to change your accent before in class? Lots to discuss. Thank you so much for joining me this hot Tuesday night live from Belgium. Uh, the more aware of you may have noticed I have swapped my shift from Thursday night to Tuesday. I will now be presenting the Late Late Show every Tuesday night. Uh, and I'm looking forward to hearing, uh, hearing from you. Now, Fernando Lamaz once said, when a person has an accent, it means he can speak more than one language. He can speak one more language than you. Now, does that mean with my Yorkshire twang, I'm finally bilingual? I don't know, but thank you so much for joining us tonight. I am so, so excited to be discussing this topic. It has created quite a stir on Twitter. I have to say it's probably the most amount of comments I've ever had uh, to, to to, to questions before and before I introduce my special guest tonight who is going to share some very interesting studies about accent in the classroom remember we want to hear from you uh, do you change your accent in class when you're teaching has it ever caused a problem has a leader ever asked you to modify your accent do you believe students should hear more accents and more local accents now I really want to hear. Uh, I really want to hear your comments on this, and you can keep in touch with us all the way through the show, either by texting in on the Podbean app or by using the hashtag TT Radio. You can also get in touch uh, with the handle at TT Radio twenty twenty two, or via my own personal Twitter at Jeff underscore Pedley at J E F F underscore P E D L E Y. Now, I never really thought about my accent in my teacher training. I'm uh, originally from Bef uh, from Beverly in East Yorkshire, although I've lived in Bradford and uh, my family's from Bradford and I grew up in Richmond in North Yorkshire. I've moved around Yorkshire quite a lot. Uh, and I did my teacher training in Lancaster. Now, again, it didn't really pose much of, it, much of an issue just going across, uh, going across the country. And it wasn't until my NQT year when uh, I went down to Essex. I went down to a, a, a town called Whitham in uh, just outside, in between Colchester and Chelmsford. And I remember one of the very first lessons I ever taught. It was a year 10 class, so 15 year olds. And it was, it was almost completely girls. I remember it was about 25 females in this class. And it was... a uh, learning to learn class you know one where they were trying to get students to reflect on their their learning strategies and methodology and i remember nervous nqt i came into the class and uh i, I just without thinking probably went right into my yorkshire accent i was like right don't want out on don't want out on tables needs to be out there please just get on with it and i remember this girl putting her hand up and going sir what part of what part of scotland are you from and before I could even before I could even reply, the girl next to her tapped her really hard and went, shut up, you silly cat, it's from Wales. And I was stood at the front of the class. I remember replying, I'm from a little country called England, not too far, four hours up the road from you. And it really struck me for the first time, I need to be careful. If I can't even say nout and out, of course, why would I be able to say that? But ever since then, I've, I really have watered down my accent and it was commented on quite a lot. Uh, I then moved further into further towards the big smoke and in, in, into an academy in Tilbury, and again, I I really I really slowed down. I really slowed down with my accent when I was teaching. I actually now, for the regular listeners, you'll know I now teach in Belgium at a European Union school, and I really really uh, am careful when it comes to my accent. However, these students really need to be exposed exposed to different types of English, of course. 
Now, uh, as I said in my introduction there, accent is identity, accent is pride, you know, but it's also that balance with it, with it being a, a, an obstacle to communication. And like I say, just before I introduce my guest here, remember you can comment in already. I'm seeing lots of, uh, lots of texts and, and lots of things on the Twitter and I'll try and get through as many uh, people as I can, uh, as I can over the next, uh, over the next few minutes or so. Uh, I'm just looking for my guest because I'm really excited tonight to be uh, to be speaking to a lady called Lisa Marie McGee. Now she'll she'll be calling in in a moment's time or so. However, she has recently done a study on uh, a very interesting study all about accents in the accents in the classroom okay i'm just uh sorting out the telephone call here lisa can you hear me okay lisa marie yes i can hear you can you hear me excellent loud and clear so uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight uh and uh i've, I've given a little bit of an introduction here i know i'm like I say, we're talking about accents tonight and you've done some really interesting studies with this. But just before we get on to this, you, you're an English teacher yourself? Yes, that's right. Um, so I've been an English teacher for the last 10 years, teaching in a school in Warrington that I absolutely loved. Um, but recently I've secured a promotion and I'll actually be moving to a bigger school in, in September um in my local community so i'm really excited about that yeah excellent and i finally got an english teacher on here as well my first show i think i had a, a history teacher and then we had pe last week or so or last time so finally finally we're, we're moving towards team english uh and so what first things first why did you decide to to study accents in the classroom what was it that brought you into this area um okay so Accent um, is something that has always really fascinated me. Um, now, personally, I'm really proud of my working class background, my accent, and I do consider my accent to be a big part of my identity. Um, and throughout um, my teacher training, there were times, particularly, um, you know, at university, uh, where I had negative comments made about my accent. And mm. it was then really that um, I, it sparked some interest. In, and throughout the years, teaching accent, you know, being an English teacher, it's something that I have taught explicitly in the classroom and something I've always been really passionate about. So when I started um, my research, I was really interested in the journeys of educators from across the UK and uh, the world. And how their accents were perceived by others and the impact that this had on their careers and in yeah. their everyday teaching. Yeah, it, it's so interesting. The area that you're from as well in the Northwest, I mean, what a rich area when it comes to accents as well. Absolutely, yes. Uh, we've got, you know, a big range of accents in, in the Northwest and um, that was something that came out in the research as well that, um, lots of people and it, it was it was really good the you know the feedback we had for, was from such a range um mm. was excellent what uh what were your main findings i mean you in fact even before we go on to that you touched upon the fact that leaders commented on your accent or you were you were told to uh to modify your accent or water down your accent can you remember exactly the conversation or what you were asked to do um, it, it wasn't actually um i've never been explicitly told um to modify my accent but i have had colleagues and friends um who have had those um conversations with senior leaders and reason you know this research that came out um and I, i'm reading through some of the comments about you know these teachers um, mm. being asked to modify their accents, you know, by a senior leader in particular, I was astounded. I, I'm reading through these things thinking, this, this can't be, this can't be true. This can't be happening in the classroom today. You know, this can't be happening in schools, but it absolutely is present. 
Um, and it, it mainly comes from the those people with really broad accents. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, people that were saying, my, my uh, they told me to um, I needed to sound a little bit more crisp and clear in the classroom <laughs> so the kids could understand me. Um, you know, and I've had it working in a school in Warrington. I didn't think it would be an issue, but I, you know, I have had comments made about my accent and it isn't that far away from where I live. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, it has happened, uh, especially with, you know, when you, you have students as well. I think it's a big thing for students to comment on as well. Yeah, it's that battle, isn't it? As, we, as we've talked before, because accent is identity, as I said in the introduction there. And if someone asks you to change it, if someone if someone asks you to to modify and, and to a to a to a degree as well, of course, dialects, we're kind of over, overlapping here with the words that we're using as well. But uh maybe maybe to a lesser degree and but it, it is that battle i guess between being understood as well you know and 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 i can imagine that's where it comes from the senior leaders uh my when i was in a in an academy in essex i always remember on the first day of the first day of term the one of the ceos i think the uh, uh, one of the uh senior leaders uh telling us all that we that we had to try our hardest to speak uh with a standard english accent now she did talk a lot about dialect as well there was a problem with people going we uh, you know uh i were we was we were you know mixing them up right. but yeah. but it it was really interesting because the head teacher was from dublin and a really strong accent the ceo was telling this was from yorkshire and we had the, the deputy CEO and within the staff we had South Africans and Australians and all of this. So, so a really rich, a really rich accents there, you yeah. know. So for you to be told, you know, to kind of speak in standard English, it's that received pronunciation, you know, the the, the BBC English that we hear. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I think it takes something away if we, you know, if we are told to speak that way. I think it takes something away from not only that individual but the children that are sat in front of us and they they don't get that opportunity to hear all those different um, accents and the richness that goes with that and it, it's what makes uh, you know our, our language brilliant yeah uh, and you again and just going back to your point there about leaders commenting on this do you this was this one of the questions you asked explicitly in your studies it was yes um so uh, the study I carried out um, consisted of 250 educators from across the UK. Um, so these educators ranged from ITTs to heads of departments and even all the way up to head teachers. Um, now, the one, of the, the one of the questions that interested me um, was, has a colleague ever made a judgment or a negative comment about your accent? At, at some point in in your career and 76 percent of the people that were surveyed of the wow. educators that were surveyed said that this had happened to them at some point in their career 76 percent uh, yeah 76 uh, percent and I, I i was i was quite taken aback by that statistic you know um from someone who comes from you know like the northwest um like I, like I said, I'm I'm really proud of my accent, and uh, I'm one of those people that always stands up for others. And I think you know that idea of the negative comments around accent when it's such a big part of of who you are, you know. Um, yeah. It's it's really derogatory, isn't it, to to comment on such a thing? <laughs> I'm just going to read out a few of the comments that I've had online and on Twitter and on Facebook of of what people have been asked to change uh, by, by by their by their leaders. We had uh, an English teacher called Reach, uh, sorry Rita uh, Maculita who wrote in saying, "Being from Dublin, I definitely." Uh, sorry, I was told to water down my accent working in Essex. I had to slow down and change the way I said things. And she said <laughs> that Irish teachers, I, I, I know this, that students take the mick out of the Irish teachers, but especially the maths teachers, dirty tree and a turd when they see 30, oh. 33 and a third, dirty tree and a turd. Uh, we had uh, Fiona texting saying that she, when she was working in uh south london she was asked 
to stop sounding so much like a Cockney. And her reply was, I am a Cockney. She was told to speak more Queen's English. There was a, a geography teacher called Lisa Matsix who said when she worked in a school in Manchester, they thought that her Cumbria accent was hilarious. They would say, I'm sorry, she would say, are you sure? But she says it like, sure. Are you sure? And they would struggle to keep their faces straight and they would say, sure. Uh, but she changed her accent. So this, this teacher worked really hard to change her accent so it fit in with the Manchester accent. And then when she went back to Cumbria, really struggled. And I've had that, uh, it's really interesting. I've seen that comment quite a few times of when people have gone back home when, and, and even though they're surrounded by their home accent, they still have their adapted accent like left over. Uh, it's really, it's actually yeah. really interesting that, isn't it? it? Moving from place to place and, you know, it, it, it is a very natural thing to um, pick up on someone's accent when you're spending so much time in a certain place or with certain people. Um, but, you know, going back home and, uh, you know, I, I found that really interesting. Yeah. What, what else did you find in your studies? Um, so the... Uh, another thing that uh, another question that I posed was, um, do you think someone's accent can impact their life chances? Um, I'd asked for a little bit of feedback and whether people could give me some, um, you, you know, ideas of yeah. um, responses. Now, 73 percent of people there said that they do believe that accent can impact life chance. Um, now. A lot of the responses here were around the idea of unconscious bias. Now, I had people talk about mm. they believed unconscious bias around intelligence. Um, I, I had someone, uh, someone who is from Birmingham say that they had been judged quite negatively because of their Brummy accent um, mm. and that they were always perceived to be less intelligent than they were just because of their accent. And um, she actually has a, a doctorate and um, is extremely intelligent. <laughs> and yeah. and I really enjoyed telling people that story. And it, it, it did make me smile, you know. Um, <laughs> another person, some people regard certain accents, particularly those from the North, with having, um, you know, a bit with derogatory and negative stereotypes. Mm. Um, and, and again, broad regional accents can be more likely to be stereotyped, causing discrimination at interviews and things like that. And interestingly, that is something um, that a few people had talked about, how they believe that they were really overlooked at interview and it fell down to that idea of them having quite a broad accent. Why do you think this is? Why do you think... Why do you think they think they are judged on accents? Why do you think people try to modify their accents in the classroom? I, I, I think, I, you know, I think a lot of this um, may come from the idea of the media and television and how people perceive these specific accents. You know, um, I've I've read some awful derogatory comments about, uh, you know, mm. people like like the Scouse accent, Liverpoolian accent. Um, so, so much so, like how kind of I don't want to read anymore. And I, I do think, you know, people have these um, subconscious bias, uh, you know, and, and it's it's almost drip fed through the media and um, through the TV shows that we watch, the news that we see. Um, you know, mm. and it can even kind of come down to the things that we hear in our homes. You know, what what do your parents think um, of certain accents and the conversations that you'll overhear at home? Because I think, you know, especially when it comes to students and accents, some of them don't even realise that they're being negative towards a specific accent. They don't see yeah. the problem yeah. with it. And I, I don't even think they mean to do it. Um, it's just this naivety behind it. So I really do think, you know, us as educators, especially being in front of these children for hours and hours um, every day, we have like the perfect opportunity to educate and, and, and really talk about the importance of accent and, and, and what, what that makes and how, how it shapes our society. Mm. If I'm just going to ask a hypothetical question here. If you had a student, Lisa Marie, who 
had an admission uh, had a admissions interview at Cambridge University. She'd got in. And she was she was really nervous about this interview and had a really really strong Scouse accent, and came to you and said, "Miss, should I water down my accent for this interview?" What would you say to her? Oh, absolutely not. I would absolutely. I, I would tell her to be herself. I mean, you know. <laughs> I think that goes without saying. Uh, yeah, it's, it's that confidence, that level of confidence. But again, I think it, it, it's vital that we do have this mix mixture of of students. And you know, Cambridge being a, a prestigious university um, mm. is is often associated, you know, with those um, RP speakers, and we do see that the things that we watch on television. But it, it is normal that we have, like I know from the school that I taught in, we had students um, go to Cambridge it, from from our from our school, and and mm. that, that was that was an amazing thing, and it just goes to show it. It's not about your background, the way you speak. It's how hard you work, and you know, accent is is part of you. So I, I would absolutely never tell anyone to change their accent to what just would... to suit someone else. What would you say if that student was apply had an admissions interview for uh, a university in Holland? Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. The, the the course was all taught in English, and the the administrators were English. Would you? What would you say? She says, "I'm going to go there with my Scouse accent. They speak I English think, on the course." Uh, I think you know if you have a if you have like quite a broad Scouse accent, um, I think Scousers tend to talk quite quickly. Um, so I, I, I would talk possibly just about the pace and using standard yeah. English. I, I w again, I would say as long as you consider your pace, uh, um, I, I know that I'm guilty of that sometimes. That you know I, I have to reflect on my own pace at times uh, when I'm teaching. Uh, eventually, my students become used to it. Um, but <laughs> I, I think, you know, pace, standard English, I, I, the accent, I don't think it would be necessary to change. Yeah, I, I agree with you as well. And uh, it's really interesting you talk, we're, we're talking a lot about the Liverpool accent here as well. One of the, somebody on Twitter, sorry, I can't remember who it is, I'll see if I can find it in a second, uh, wrote in on Twitter that she used to give, uh, let me see here, she used to give texts out in her English class. Uh, she's called Miss the hashtag uh, Mrs H H Wig Mrs Wig. She said my scout accent always caused problems because uh, when she used to say to the students, "Look at text D and look at text E," it sounds the same. And I had to, D &E. yeah, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. I, I had to think about that because I was like, D and E, no, it's surely not the same. But I, I. Please don't 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 judge my accent, my scouse accent here. But it's like, is it text, go for it? Te texty, texty. No, it <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> well yeah, done. It doesn't. And then when I was playing it through in my head, I was like, no, there won't be a difference. Is that text A, text B, text? This is awful. Text A, text B, text C, text D, text E. It really is so similar. Uh, yeah, very similar. I think you'll find that in a lot of accents and um, especially if you've got students sat in front of you that aren't used to a specific accent. You know, we're talking about uh, UK accents, but I think that goes above and beyond, uh, 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 you know, wider than yeah. that. Um, we ha had lots of um, feedback from people, not only in the UK, but, you know, people from Europe teaching in the UK, even yeah. as far as Australia. So, you know, there, there are people from all around the world who ha face these problems um, and have encountered certain issues in school due to their accent. And I think it is, you know, a big part of that. Um, I, I was asking on Twitter last night um, about this idea of do... I, I was intrigued as to whether teachers explicitly taught a unit um dedicated mm. to accents and dialect or whether it was kind of interwoven into another scheme or, or into a, another unit of work and many people were saying that it was interwoven into a, a, a unit of existing work and it got me thinking whether you know we should have a really 
a clear amount of time, a block of time as English teachers to explore this, because I do think it's something that's really important for students to um, be thinking about, not only on a day to day basis, but as they grow and go into workplaces and meet new people. Mm. Um, I, I think it is something that, you know, we should all be doing explicitly. Yeah, my uh, my partner, her first language, or my wife now, uh, we've just come back from our honeymoon. That's why I wasn't Congratulations. here. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, her first language is Dutch, and but her English is amazing. She speaks English as a second language. And right. it's, uh, it's, it's really interesting when she comes across other languages as well, because as I say, her English comprehension is amazing. But I, I always, and it always stands. She was really worried about her English, and then I think at her first day of work in London, when it was the we was we were I was I were all getting mixed up, she felt at ease. But we went to the races in Newcastle. Almost one of the one of the first things we did when she came across to England, and I always remember this guy turning around to her and saying, uh, "You got to be sat there long, pet." And she looked at me like, and I was like, "I don't know, I don't know what he said," and then. You had to well, work out the situation that he like wanted his bag looking. He, he was going to the toilet, wanted his bag to be looking. Are you going to be sat there long, pet? But she, he said it like three times and she was like, oh, my God, what is going on here? And it's that it's it's that battle that I go back to, isn't it? Between being proud of your culture, being proud of your identity and then. But also, you need to be understood as well. And of course, he was in Newcastle. You said so. Of course, it it doesn't matter to him. But it's it's really interesting, isn't it? Uh, that battle that we have. Uh, I see it a lot. I I see it a lot now. Obviously, teaching in Brussels, uh, I try and expose the kids to, to to as many different UK accents, well, British accents, and worldwide English accents as possible as well. But uh, it, it is it is so interesting. I would love to hear from people if you have any uh any thoughts on what we're discussing today uh, james swan's just uh he wrote on my twitter a few he replied on the twitter a few days ago in a really nice uh <laughs> really nice yorkshire accent uh ayo par kid yeah i've not just too seen <laughs> <laughs> all right lad uh, <laughs> and uh if especially if you've had to if you've had to change your accent or you've been asked to water down your accent i'm very intrigued and specifically what as well was the was it the dialect or we're talking a lot about accents here but was was there anything with the word choice or the vocabulary that you had to change as well i mean i i, I went to school in in hull and well in, in in beverly sorry just outside hull and we would be skegging a look and bunking and yogging things across the classroom which again changes in every school but we're not talking here, are we, about the words? We're talking about the accent, which... Uh, like <laughs> you sure. said, though, I think I, I think um, accent and dialect, they go hand in hand, don't they? Um, I, I, I've had so many um, fun ta fun lessons over the years doing um, scouse yeah. quizzes in, in my class, and I've had children look at me like I've got three heads because they have no idea what words I'm saying. Um, so I do think it is, it, you know, dialect is just... Um, an extension isn't it? it's part of of that identity as well yeah i completely agree listen lisa marie i could talk for ages about this but we're going to go to the news now and we'll come back in a few minutes we've just got Absolutely. some news and adverts thank you so much and thank you so much for everybody who has uh who has messaged in so far i know we've had a uh a couple of callers as well who want to get in we will try to get in get you in in that second half okay i will see you after the news see you in a little bit this episode of teachers talk radio has been made possible with support from witherslack group the uk's leading provider of sen education and care they're here to support you, too, through an ever-growing offer of free resources, including webinars, podcasts, articles, and events aimed at supporting teaching professionals like you. Visit their website at www.withaslackgroup.co.uk to find out more. This is Two Minute Tech with Steve Woods, your tech briefing on Teachers Talk Radio. Hello, this week I continue with my series on home connection and getting the best performance. The question today is wired or wireless connection, which is best? In the past, the wired connection was considered the fastest and this would be the end of the episode. 
However, modern wireless speeds are comparable with a wired connection. So what factors affect performance? The first factor to consider is can you actually connect via a wire? Some devices don't have an ethernet or compatible port to have a wired connection. Being hardwired allows a more stable connection. You're not relying on high frequency waves to transmit your data and waves are susceptible to interference in the shape of distance from the transmitter receiver in human language, your hub. Then there are walls, furniture, other devices, basically anything that gets in the way. So the first tip is, if possible, use a wired connection. At home though, this is easier said than done. You need to be reasonably close to your home hub, as this is where the ports are, and sometimes that's not a great place to work. If you are after a wired connection away from your hub, then take a look at using power line adapters. These are two plugs that use your existing home electric wiring to create a virtual wired connection to anywhere in the building that has a plug socket. They are relatively cheap, and some can also be used as wireless extenders, allowing you to create a better Wi-Fi coverage in dark spots in your home. At around 30 to 50 pounds, it's a relatively cheap and aesthetically pleasing option compared to running cables around your home. Meshing is the next solution to improve coverage. More recently, homes have been adopting the mesh system. Meshing is linking wireless access points together to extend their range. All have the same sign-in so you can seamlessly move from one to the other with uninterrupted connection. Starting at around £80, it's a more expensive option, but if you only have devices that use Wi-Fi, this might be the answer for you. With most home networks, after bandwidth availability, interference is your next enemy. Always try to place your home hub in the most central place if the telephone sockets allow, otherwise consider power line adapters or meshing. Most modern internet providers give you options to buy these devices from them. This will guarantee it works for your network, but be aware this will come at a higher price tag. If this has given you food for thought, I'd love to hear from you. Why not get in touch at TT Radio 2022? Follow us and tell us what you want to know about tech. I'm Steve Woods, and that was Two Minute Tech. Two Minute Tech with Steve Woods, your tech briefing on Teachers Talk Radio. If you're listening to this, then we know we share one thing in common a passion for the type of outstanding education that every child deserves. That's what makes us the leading provider of specialist education and care. We need people like you to help us achieve even more. With us, you'll be given all the resources and support you need, offered a clear path to career progression, and be rewarded with some of the best salaries and benefits the industry has to offer. We are with a Slack group. If you'd like to find out more, we'd love to hear from you. Visit www.withaslackgroup.co.uk forward slash careers and be part of our future. Well, she had a lovely accent, but she still missed off the word future at the end. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are live on the Late Late Show to do- talking about accents in the classroom. I've been joined by Lisa uh, Lisa Marie McGee, who's been who's an English teacher, who's been doing some studies on accents in the cl- uh, in the classroom, and indeed uh, how people have been treated because of their accents within the classroom. And if you have anything at all that you'd like to contribute to the show, please do get in touch. You can tweet us at TT Radio 2022 or the hashtag TT Radio. You can contact me directly at Jeff underscore pedley j-e-f underscore p-e-d-l-e-y or indeed uh if you are listening live on the podbean app you can share some contributions there as well i have had uh, a few more uh comments from people but also i have had uh woody uh who is who is texting who would like to uh come on as a speaker woody if you just click accept there you should be able to you should be able to join us can you hear me okay yes i can can you hear me yeah go ahead how are you doing tonight i'm great thank you hi lisa hi woody how are you i'm fab thank you i just thought i'd call in and share my experience with um in terms of my accent so um i grew up in accrington and um, my accent is a lot more mild now than the traditional Accrington accent, shall we say. And I was going to say, I was going to say, I didn't hear a strong <laughs> Accrington to start with. Yeah, go ahead. No, but sometimes it does come out. Um, so when I first moved to Warrington, that was about um, in 2010. And not long after that, I started to teach in Warrington, very close to where Lisa worked. And actually we trained, hmm. uh, we, were, we were at the same school as we were training. 
anyway, um, the children would normally ask me and would say, uh, where are you from? Are you from Yorkshire? And I didn't think at any point in my life up to then that I sounded like I was from Yorkshire. Oh, um, the burden, really... the, the horror of being. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I always used to say I was from the better side of the Pennine. <laughs> oh, controversial, <laughs> controversial. <laughs> um, but yeah, it sparked really interesting conversations. Now, I'm not sure um, whether you know or not, but I'm actually um, of um, a different ethnic origin. I was born in a different country. And when the children asked where I was from, at the beginning, it used to frighten me to say, to kind of say to them where I come from originally, because I wanted to share that, but at the same time, I didn't. Yeah. I wasn't sure whether I should or shouldn't. But it got to a point where one child said, no, I, I mean, so I would say I was from Accrington, and that's why I sound different. Um, yeah. But then one child was really brave, and she said, no, I meant where are you from, from. Mm. And th at that point, I actually brave. I became a lot more brave and I told them where I was from originally. And it was great because children in Warrington, they're not exposed to many ethnic minorities. Warrington is not really ethnically diverse. It is a little bit yeah. more now from years on. And that for me was really important because and it was it was good for them to see that people come from other parts of the world and they are just as British as everybody else and um, yeah. it was really good conversa interesting conversation because they'd never heard of the country I came from. In fact it doesn't exist to a lot of people but it was really interesting to see how they reacted to that and how they had so many questions and they went away to want to find out about me and where I was from and then yeah. they became really interested in my religion and they would ask well what religion are you do you believe in God because I'm a science teacher and I would say yeah I believe in God but I don't like discussing religion mm. at all and that's just who I am and it was really interesting for them to come back and say well actually where you come from you could be one of three religions um, and it was really good because it got them not just yeah. interested in, in, in my accent got them also interested in where other people are from and how even though we might look different uh, and sound different but we are pretty much the same yeah oh, yeah that's, that's brilliant. thank you so much that that's so interesting that's so interesting as well if if you don't mind me asking what what, what is your country that you said um, so that you... I, was, I was born in the West Bank of Palestine. Um, yeah. So it is a very interesting place to be from. <laughs> yeah, amazing. For, for the students as well, it's so enriching as well in, in, in so many different ways to open up those those conversations. Did it, you... It really and, was. and just going back to your, your accent, you said you, you've kind of watered your accent down a bit over the years, did you say? <laughs> over time I don't it wasn't a conscious effort and um, it just changed over time and sometimes when I'm angry um I would come out very much at <laughs> and um, if sometimes like, my boys say to me that if I'm angry in Arabic I, it's it, I'm a different person so, uh, <laughs> it, just, it just happened it just changed over time but going back to the conversation where children become really interested like when I worked at when I worked in Haydock um my accent my accent was a topic of a question all the time in the class room and one child was adamant he wanted us to see a picture of my father when he realized that I come from a different place and I said why would you want to see my dad and eventually I said do you know what I'll show you a picture of my dad and I did and he said oh miss he just looks like the rest of us <laughs> And it was, <laughs> what, like what was he expecting? That conversation because he thought my dad would be would look like what you think Arabs are in in mm. like what you see in films or I don't know Lawrence of Arabia I don't know but it was yeah. really good and I loved those conversations and I still have them now in my current school in Warrington and it doesn't make me feel negative in any way shape or form I do love the fact that they use they they see asking about my accent and it opens and it gives them a chance to ask about where I'm from and my background and I love telling them that because I think it's important that they that they know and it's I a think, connection um, isn't it sorry go yeah, ahead I, th I think it's you know it's really important you you know you're a science teacher as well and the fact that you will stop that learning and have those conversations I think is fantastic I think we need more of that. We need, you know, teachers not to be afraid to 
um, to talk about these things during lessons and, you know, stop the learning when appropriate and when necessary. Yeah, yeah. And it is learning. I mean, it might not necessarily be science. It's still linked to science, um, but it, it's important for them to, to see that people coming from different places um, still have so much in common. Everybody is, there's more that unites us than 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 not if if that makes sense and yeah. it, it, it sometimes it's having it's difficult to ask people where they're from because sometimes it makes it makes it come across maybe racist but when my children mm. they see me when they're comfortable with me and know and know what i'm like as an individual not uh, as their teacher they be, they have that confidence to ask and to to ask those questions and i think it, it's good it's important that they can have the confidence yeah. to ask these questions because in other places in, in another context it might be deemed as well, why are you asking me where i'm from what does it matter and actually some mm. people might see it as quite offensive i don't not not with my students and if anybody asks me I, I don't get offended at all but you can see where i'm coming from some people would perceive it as quite offensive to be asked yes where they're from yeah yeah. And I suppose would it, it it works on the flip side as well. So, for example, if you could imagine a a, a teacher who who was from the same ethnic background as the students, but then had a really strong Palestinian accent and was proud was proud of their accent. Yeah, 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 know, yeah. Bit, just bringing it back to the accent, just the accent from here as well, but and. and I see exactly what you mean. Uh, two things that came out of that from from me, just to that quick discussion, uh, kind of going away from la accents, but into languages. I'm learning French and Dutch at the same time. At the, well, not very well, but at the same time because <laughs> of, of where I live in Belgium. And people at, at work say I have a, a different personality when I speak French, like a proper oh. arrogant, <laughs> arrogant personality, which I'm certainly not. But I can't help it when I speak <laughs> when I speak French. And likewise, uh, the second the second thing that came out from that mm. when you were talking about the students saying, "Oh, did you have a bit of a, a Yorkshire accent?" and, and, and there being a very slight difference in your accent. I once worked, I did one year where I worked up in the Lake District up in uh, South Cumbria. And it must have only been like a couple of hours drive from where I grew up and where my where my family was from. And the first day I, I did the induction day at the school and then I went to the local the local pub, just asked for a pint. And the barman said within me, with me just saying, can I have a pint please, blah, 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 I sat down. He said, you will never be welcome in this village with that accent. And I said... What accent? I says I sound like not too different from you. And he went, "No, that's a Yorkshire accent. We're up <laughs> South Cumbria, but we used to be Lancashire, and we don't like Yorkshire people." And it was like ninety nine point nine percent white area, and their issue was people speaking with a slightly different accent. Uh, and it always it always stood out from me that, and I was I was gone from that area within within a year because they actually they actually were like that sometimes. All oh, Yorkshire folk coming over here. It was like a wow. peninsula, <laughs> peninsula in the edge of, of the Lake District. Uh, I just want to move on to a couple of comments, uh, Lisa Marie, that people have uh, texted in, if that's okay, and, and just just to see how this how this matches up with with a bit of your research as well. Uh, but again, it's all very similar to what you talked to. It, it kind of supports that idea of what you said before about 75%, uh, 76% of people being asked to modify their accents. Uh, and, I get, and, and I guess some of the, but some of these have come from the, the teachers themselves rather than leaders. There was, uh, I got a tweet in from Melba Max who said, I've never been asked, but I have, she's from Northern Ireland. Uh, and she started teaching in Derby in England. And she said that she was asked to, that she started to modify her phonics sounds when she taught. Cause she was a key stage one teacher uh, for the spelling for the in, in, in key stage one. She had to change the O W O U sounds and the A I. The phonics. O, the O, yeah, yeah. And yeah. That's actually something that I, um, I, I was going to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. So one of the um, questions that I asked um, that I posed was, do you think teachers should modify their accent if it's too broad? And 83% of um, educators actually said no. Um, 
Now, I was quite surprised by that because I thought it'd be more of a 50-50 for that exact reason. Because when I thought about the question, I thought, you know, there will be certain situations where um, especially and phonics was the one that came up the most in the feedback. And when yeah. I was thinking about it, um, you know, in order for um, those students, especially at key stage one, um, key stage two, you know, to to get that grasp of of phonics, um, they need to be explicitly taught those sounds, and it needs to it needs to come from that kind of um, standard English that um, RP in order for them to grasp those sounds. Um, and a lot of um, a lot of the people that said yes, the, those accents should be modified. Mm. Um, had phonics as the reason as to why they should be uh, modified. Do you have any advice for teachers who are worried about maybe maybe like an NQT, for example, or a, it's not NQT now, an ECT, who uh, who have moved to a to a different area nationwide and are really worried about their accents and maybe the students are commenting on this earlier on, etc. Do you have any advice to those teachers? Um, personally, I would say um, it's a lot of it is about being confident. If you are, you know, if you go to teach somewhere um, and the students sound different to you, um, I think it's a lot like what Woody was just saying. It's about having those really um, mm. open conversations. You know, it's vital that we as educators teach our students that accents are part of someone's social identity and often it can tell us something about, you know, things like social class, educational history, ethnic, religious affiliations. And we should celebrate accents and diversity and never be afraid to, to, to stop that learning, like I was saying before, you know, and, and have those conversations with, with the children. So I, I think a lot of it would be being confident about who you are and, you know, especially if, if your accent is a big part of who you are. I don't think that should change if you, uh, if you know, explicitly change. I don't think you should move somewhere and have to change yeah. the way you sound and modify who you are. It's interesting. It's interesting that uh, you talk about confidence there. I think I think you've you've touched on a nice point there because, I, as I say, I've heard teachers talk about before. They 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 feel that it's a way for the students to undermine them. If they've got a really strong accent or they're outside of their area and the students are, you know, oh, you say this differently or whatever, and then the, the teacher changes their accent. But I would I would argue that the accent isn't the issue because students can always find some, some way to get under your skin from, from any direction. Oh. And, we, and I, I agree with you, it's confidence. Every teacher yeah. knows that. Yeah, every teacher knows that students, if, if they want to, they can find yeah. some way to annoy you. <laughs> And and I agree with you that it's it's confidence. And again, when it comes to the accent, it's just being proud and being this is me, this is my identity. And if you if you're not happy with that, tough, you know, <laughs> let's get oh, let's well, open the textbook absolutely. and get on with it. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's interesting as well because I I was just reflecting myself. There's teachers that I've come across that have probably had the strongest, most difficult English accents to understand who I've taught with have probably been uh, have probably been in the French department or the languages department. And on the flip side of this, they have probably also been the most confident of their accents, you know. And it even That's was one of, interesting. Yeah, it's even one of the comments that I got on, on on Twitter as well. A French teacher saying, "You know, I speak with a really strong French accent when I'm teaching. They need to learn <laughs> how a French person <laughs> speaks with a strong accent. Get on with it. This is how I'm going to teach." You know, and and I really, I really think that's important, isn't it? That that confidence and the students the students kind of come along with you i because you're the first english teacher that i've had on lisa marie i'm just going to ask you a slightly different question i hope i don't put you on the spot here oh but, and, and, and don't <laughs> don't worry don't worry at all if you haven't heard of these because this is stretching back into my teacher training a long time ago but did you ever do you, did you ever remember doing the uh, cox's models when you were training to be an english teacher do you ever um... remember coming across this do, can can you refresh my memory as to what, so it's like what all, it might have been? It's like all the different types of English teachers you can have. 
he came, uh, Dr. Cox was doing a, a study, I think it was early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. And he said there was five different types of English teacher. And we kind of bring this into our classroom. And that's the type of teacher we are. Uh, so, for example, do, do you remember this? And, they, and if you didn't, maybe... maybe yeah, I, I, I vaguely remember this. Um, it, it touched upon... Um, like personal growth, cross curricular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I remember, yeah, that that, that that was testing me, and I'm pretty impressed. I remember some <laughs> I'm, of so, it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But it, it just the reason that the, the, there is a point to this. Don't worry, I'm not just going off on a tangent. But it when I think about accents and I think about being an English teacher, how you approach this action is probably the type of English teacher that you are. So, for example. Cox came up, didn't he? And he said that there were five different types of English teacher. If you had uh, the teachers who, or, or, or maybe teaching styles is a better way of saying it, but uh, the cultural heritage where it was important to teach That's English right. for, for your culture, etc., keeping the heritage going, literature, blah, blah, blah. Uh, from a functional point of view, to be able to be able to communicate clearly and, and, and get on with your needs. Personal growth, basically to be creative and, and, and being open. Uh, analytical in in, in, in the case of being quite critic, uh, a critical reader of media, blah, 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 things like this. And finally, cross-curricular, that English is just a key that opens up other topics and subjects. And I think the, the people who maybe are really quite positive about using accents in the classroom, to me, seem to be the that kind of cultural teacher, you know, cultural your heritage, heritage. Your, your pride, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I'm teaching you language because this is our culture you know this is language is culture language is identity whereas Absolutely. i feel the ones who are probably saying no you need to speak rp you need to have standard english and maybe more towards i don't know the functional aspect of it i don't know but possibly I, I, that's actually a really interesting way of looking at it i'm i'm going to go away and and do a little bit more reading around that <laughs> it's been a while since i've i've read that report but um i suppose that kind of links in with this idea of you know the school's responsibility to um or our responsibility as educators to expose them to the, all those different types of literature and the culture that goes with and it can you know that that all links in doesn't it yeah uh, we've just thank you so much we've just had a comment here sorry i was just reading the comment at the same time working yeah. in a military school from james uh james one working in a military school i've almost never heard someone's accent be mocked because there are so many different ones and he says if i got a penny for every time the kids laughed at me for the way <laughs> where oh, I that's, say, that's, no, that's Woody there. If I, I got a penny for, ah, yeah, I think ah, yeah, that's, sorry, that's, yeah, that's Woody. That's because Woody. I'm, I'm sure she's. Uh, that's the no. It's the Woody oh, out, it, ah, Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty certain, but I might be wrong. But uh, like, uh, and uh, again, that's that you you you'd hear that a town over but i i love that yeah. i think that's brilliant i think <laughs> Why not? i love listening to different people and all and how they sound but i had a, a conversation today um <laughs> she's laughing there i had a conversation <laughs> today with a, a a friend from northern ireland and um like he was talking about how he was teaching in a um city center school in manchester and he said exactly the same thing the yeah, accents yeah. were not nothing was said about accents because they were so you know culturally rich uh, the, the accents there were so many yeah. different accents and yeah. uh, th that's that that to me is brilliant I, like i think that's fantastic it's it's interesting uh James Swan as well talking about this that when you've got a lot of different accents it kind of cancels everybody yeah. cancels each other out with the in in maybe in terms of power or prestige or status or whatever and like everybody is equal in that kind of sense it in the environment that I work in it's it's almost taking it a step further because everybody speaks different languages and completely different levels of language and there's right. no dom there's no dominant language because we've got nine sections in our school so we've got dutch english finnish swedish italian spanish uh english french and wow uh, spanish i don't know or portuguese sorry and the because so everybody's speak many different languages yeah it's it's not unheard of in my class for them to be speaking english as their fifth language and wow. and they still speak it better than me half the time but anyway <laughs> the, uh, and, but it isn't even just it isn't even just the accent but it's the level of the language as well because if somebody comes into a class and 
his English is poor. Nobody takes the mick out of him because they'd be like, he's probably fluent in Portuguese, probably fluent in Swedish, probably fluent in Absolutely. French. Or something. Do you know what I mean? So it's like that, yeah. I, that that's that again i think that's so interesting the amount of students that um i have that have sat in front of me in the classroom and i yeah. now go out of my way to you know to speak to my students with whose english is their additional language and and talk about you know what is your mother tongue where are you from uh, like uh, t- tell me about your language I, I, i'm really intrigued and and then it would come out oh i actually speak this language and this language yeah. English is my third language and I'm there I'm so impressed I I, I, I found that so impressive <laughs> yeah my 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 best man at the wedding is it was Dutch and basically he would make make a mess all the time he would have a really strong accent in English uh, when he was speaking English and whenever I corrected him or commented his his comeback was just how's your Dutch how's your Dutch you know <laughs> Which You're is quite just a good getting comeback. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How's your Dutch, Jeff? I've got one <laughs> final question before I do some quick fire questions at the end, if that's okay, Lisa, Lisa Marie. And we will Absolutely. bring it to a close for tonight. Uh, so my first, my, sorry, my final question is: What are you going to do with it, with these results? So you've you've done this study now. You've you've got quite a lot of data back with it. What what's your plan? Um, so I've just finished um, kind of analysing all of those findings and going through each of the responses because I wanted to give it the time it deserved. Um, you know, people have gone out of their way to to do this survey and um, I've just finished writing an article that I will be sharing over the next few days. So it would be brilliant if people could um, read it and tell me what you think. Um, and as this is something that I am particularly passionate about, I am going to carry this research on um, and take it a little further and hopefully go forward to write a book around accent, dialect and social class in education. So that's my end goal. Sounds amazing. Please keep us all informed with it. And like I say, tag us in it. We'll we'll share it because it's it's been such a, an interesting conversation today. And like I say, you can see from uh, on Twitter the amount of responses that this has had over the last uh, over two days. Really, you only agreed to be a guest, didn't you, a couple of days yeah. ago? Yeah, yeah. And within that's, within that's that right. time, you've got fifty, sixty, God knows how many uh, responses to to some of the questions that we've asked out there. Okay, thank you so much. I'm going to end then, like I always end my shows, with some quick fire questions. So I'm going to put okay. some stupid I'm going to put some stupid music on it in the background. That's about <laughs> na- 90 seconds or so, and I'm basically just going to give you two choices and you don't need to give any justification or if you do just very minimal justification and also you just you've just got to say what you prefer. Okay? Yeah. Let's Easy go. peasy. Brilliant. Yep. Right. On your marks. Get set. Go. Morning assembly or afternoon assembly? What do you prefer? Morning. Literature or language teaching? Literature. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> class sets or mixed ability? Mixed ability. What do you prefer? Difficult this one. A forgotten exercise book or a forgotten pen? Oh, forgotten Both pen. My head in. <laughs> they Both do that. Yeah, that's, that is true. <laughs> I do my head in. <laughs> School dinners or packed lunches? School dinners. Teacher parties. Can you take your partner with or without partners? Ooh. Without you're listening, <laughs> he, he Ma- is. He is. But, um, I, I would say without. without teachers. Teachers end up talking about school and just bore yeah. their partners. Boring. <laughs> boring. Uh, school uniform. Uh, yes or no? Yes. Uh, domestic school trips or trips abroad? Domestic school trips. Yeah, safer, safer, safer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, teaching, teaching, reading, or teaching writing. Ooh, um, reading. DVDs in the final week, yes or no? Ooh, it's a no from me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on. Uh, break, break duty or lunch duty? What do you prefer? Break duty. Uh, emails on phone, yes or no? I have my emails on my phone, yes. Uh, That's full unpopular. Staff, yeah. Full staff meeting on a Monday morning, yes or no? Oh, no. 
so many places do that, don't they? Uh, <laughs> staff rooms. Yeah. Staff rooms. In uh, in departments or whole school staff rooms, what do you prefer? Uh, whole school. Yeah, I prefer the whole school. And yeah. Teachers, should they dress more casual or smarter, do you think? I'd personally say smarter. And f- you wouldn't like it in the European Union school, then. I want my brother to sit it up sometimes. Teaching. Oh, right. And then, and then finally, <laughs> there, it, there's no school uniforms or anything over here. Uh, the, I'm sure the music's still going. I can hear it, mate. Now, final question then. Yorkshire or Merseyside? Oh, I'm sorry. It's got to be Merseyside. I'm sorry. There's a really bad connection. I don't know if my Wi-Fi's gone off or it, I, I can't hear you anymore. Uh, what you, Yorkshire, was it? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> ah ha, ha, to end ha, the show. <laughs> ah, ha, ha. So funny, so funny. But I love that over the last couple of weeks, my guests have all been have all had strong accents. I, I, I listened to on. your last show. Uh, you were you had a scouser on your last show yeah. as well, didn't you? Yeah. The first one, <laughs> the first one was was me and a and an Aussie from South. Uh, sorry, from West Sydney. Then we had uh, last week. Yeah, we had a scouser last week, and then and and then yourself this week. Uh, don't know what all, what all the other presenters are like, but yeah, there's. I'm, I'm intrigued a, to see what's coming next week now. Yeah, you get your diet. <laughs> yeah, you get your diet <laughs> of accents on here. Okay, Lisa Marie, thank you so much for joining us today. I really enjoyed that, and uh, like I say, we'll look out for your article as well, and I'm going to really enjoy reading that. Oh, me too. Thank you so much for your time. Much appreciated. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for joining me. And thank you to everybody else as well who's uh, taken part, tweeted in and uh, listened tonight. If you are interested in listening back to any of the teacher talk, uh, sorry, the teachers radio shows, you can do uh, you can do via the website, which uh, and you can see that at TT Radio 2022, all of the details of past shows. And thank you so much for joining us. But all right, laugh. Hey, up. Take it easy. Bye bye. See you next Tuesday. You've been listening to Teachers Talk Radio. Tune in live and listen back at ttradio.org. We look forward to hearing from you next time on Teachers Talk Radio.